Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. My art hotel. Namaste. Free the land, beloved. Come on in, come on in, come on in. My name is Vicki Dillard, and I'm a proud contributor right here on FlyNubianQueenTV.com, the network for melanated women just like you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our podcast today. I've been missing my beloved family so, so much over the last several days. So, so happy to see you today. Welcome, 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 beloved. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get into our most important subject. And yes, we're going to be talking about Gail King opening up just recently to Oprah Winfrey doing this uh, big interview on Oprah's tour here actually in Denver, Colorado. And uh, we're getting ready to get into a little bit about that and why this is important and why it's political. But just a little bit of housekeeping as you come in, please come in giving us the thumbs up, thumbs up. Be sure to like, be sure to share because our show is often broadcast on other platforms. If you're watching us elsewhere, please like, share, and also comment there. Like, share, comment uh, if you're watching us on other platforms as well. Did you all know that we have an amazing uh, store for Fly Nubian Queen that says shopfnq.com. I have one of the shirts on today that says Afro Child. I love that. And then on the side, which side is it? Okay, it says it has a Fly Nubian Queen. It's hard for you guys to see it. Can you see that? On the side, it has the Fly Nubian Queen logo on it. And I like the fact that it's a nice and white and bright. And they may have other colors. And a nice little V-net fix you perfectly. But it says Afro Chat. And we have so many others as well. Again, that store is shopfnq.com. That's shopfnq.com. Please, please make sure that you check us out. And then also, don't forget to text the word QUEENS to 31996 so that you're able to receive phone notifications when we go live from time to time. Again, that's text the word QUEENS. Uh, to 31996 so that you're able to receive phone notifications when we go live. So family, let's get ready to get into um, our topic today. Again, I want to thank you all so much. Thank you so, so much for your extraordinary patience. Uh, as you all know, I missed several days last week, um, most of the days last week. Um, because of some medical stuff and um, I'm back and forth with appointments. So just stay tuned. And if you follow me on Instagram, a lot of times you can tell what's going on with me at Instagram too, Vicky X Dillard. And also make sure you pay close attention to our community section here at Flying Being Queen. Why? Because we post um, notices and we let you know a lot of times what's happening. Shout out to my Instagram family. Instagram, please come on over to flynubianqueentv.com. Instagram, come on over right now to flynubianqueentv.com because I'm going to need to use this device here. Uh, again, family, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Dillard because you'll find out a lot of stuff that's going on with me there and I'm posting all kinds of stuff. Thank you so much, Instagram. So good, family. Let's get ready to get into our topic uh, today. Let's get ready to get into our show today. First of all, I love you all so much. Thank you for your patience and your prayers and your kind words. Um, this is um, a journey, my health journey, and I just want to acknowledge all of your love and your patience. So anyway, family, how many of you all knew that, uh, because we've talked about it here, but how many of you all remember that Oprah, uh, is, was doing a tour and she was getting all these top name stars and all this other kind of stuff to come to her little tour and talk about balance and, and all this other stuff, uh, talking about well-being. And I think it was either sponsored by or she did it in collaboration with um, Weight Watchers. And you all know that Oprah is connected to Weight Watchers. You know, go figure. Okay, go figure, go figure. Don't, I'm not even going there. Shout out to you, Melodin, for your gift. May your gifts be returned back to you a thousandfold. And, um, some of you probably heard about Oprah's unfortunate um, little incident that took place a few days ago. Again, you know, I was gone for most of last week, but shout out to the Fly Nubian Queens uh, that was putting up all kinds of amazing uh, uh, content um, while I was gone. And of course, even uh, before that, shout out to you, Spook TV, for your gift. It says, Vicky's back. Yes, beloved. So pleased to be back. 
Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. So pleased uh, that you all are with us again today. It's such an honor. So anyway, I read that um, because I always like to read that whenever I'm dealing with clips, um, audio clips and stuff, even though, you know, it's, you know, I just like to cross my T's and dot my I's. Now watch this, family. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Surely, surely, you all have already seen the unfortunate incident with okra while I was gone. Now, let me say this. 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 Please hear me today, family. <laughs> Watch this. We all know that all of us at any given time, right, are susceptible to accidents. We are all, at one time or another, susceptible to uh, what we consider to be unfortunate things occurring in our lives. Is that right, family? Well, okra, we believe on the Vicky show of eating your vegetables. Okra and kale, even though I don't eat much kale. Okra and kale have been used over the years to be a tool against black people and on behalf of white supremacy. Did y'all hear what I said? Okra and kale have been used as tools against black society for years. So when okra attacked Russell Simmons, when okra attacked Michael Jackson, when okra attacked Bill Cosby, when Gail attacked um, Kobe Bryant, we had had enough by that time. That was the tip of the iceberg. Whenever we talk about the tip of the iceberg, how many of you all know that the tip of the iceberg means that this massive thing that you see on the surface of the water, it may look like something insurmountable and big, but that tip is representative of something that's much larger beneath the surface. I'm gonna need somebody to talk black to me. Okra and Gail have been at work against black folk for a number of years. When we talk about them being used as a tool against white, against black people and for white supremacy, that means family, that there are consequences to the work that they've been doing against black folk for years. When you are a tool for against black folk in this war that's been waged against us, and we know that our open enemy uses media as one of its main weapons against us, okra and gale have been a part of media against us over the years. And so because they did it for so long, that means they played a direct role. Listen to what I'm getting ready to say. This is a space for intelligent black people. If that's not you, this, gonna, this is going to offend you. This is going to offend you in the way that it offends the Dr. Mark Lamont Hills of the world. This is going to offend you in the way the, uh, it offends the Roland Martins of the world, the Kareem Pierre, Pierre's of the world. That's that black lady who's supposed to be some move on head. That's a political organization and an MSNBC contributor who I guess preemptively blocked me after I went in on Susan Rice and Gail King recently. 
This is going to offend you if you're like a part of that group. Because those individuals that I just named are considered in some circles to be intelligent. Now, I've never accused them of being intelligent. Lord have mercy. Not the kind of intelligence that matters. Being able to quote statistics and memorize numbers and data does not make you intelligent. What makes you intelligent, what makes you wise is the ability to know how to work your knowledge and your data to where it helps and it moves forward black society. I need somebody black to talk black to me. I don't, I've never accused them, those individuals of being legitimately intelligent. Legitimately. So this is a space for intelligent black people, but listen. So Okra and Gail have been doing a work for decades, which means they are responsible directly and indirectly for death, assault, Oppression against black people. <clears throat> Did you all hear what I just said? Did you all hear what I just said? Why are you uh, laughing at me, Byron Evans? May your gifts bless, bless. Listen, 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 listen. You cannot talk about Oprah and Gail, how powerful they are, specifically Oprah, over decades and decades and decades and the good things that she's alleged to have done. And then not discuss that if you have been a tool, a tool against your own people for decades and decades, that you didn't do some damage against your people. See, that's intelligence. That, that's not, that doesn't show signs of intelligence. You feel what I'm saying? Keep that same train of thinking. When it comes to the opposite of them being powerful and doing so much good for the world. That means that they set the atmosphere for your murder and your death. The fact that Okra refused to be a voice for black folks for issues that actually matter to us. The fact that she was hostile decade after decade after decade after decade against her own people. Shout out to you here for truth for your gift. That means that they have helped to set the atmosphere and the environment for our oppression. We lay that at their feet. Some of you have difficulty acknowledging that, believing that, because they are well-dressed enemies. Some of you have difficulty believing that because your open enemy has made evil fair seeming. I'm going to say it again. Some of you have a hard time believing that because your open enemy described Oprah in particular as a humanitarian, as a good person. And so you, the black man and the black woman, do what many of you have too often done. And that is taking our talking points and the, our worldview from our open enemy. You took your standards and the way things are supposed to be from people who did what family? Who enslaved you and oppressed you in one form or another for nearly five centuries. You took your cues from what a righteous, healthy family looks like from your open enemy. Some of you took your understanding of who God is, what the creator is. And what's required of us as people of God, you took your cues from them. So this generation, folk like me, are challenging that so-called wisdom. I need somebody black. It's possible to believe a lie for a long time. So your open enemy told you that Oprah was somebody. And so then you got excited because you said, white people like Oprah, she didn't really made it. Some of you see success when white folks say black folks are special. 
when they give you an addy boy, when they give you a pat on the back, when they give you some kind of wicked reward, when they started to, when they start doing their newspapers and their magazine covers and stuff, and they start to tell you that a Cynthia Arrivo is something special, you start saying Cynthia Arrivo is something special because white folk told you that. I'm here to challenge that. I'm here to challenge that in the same way that the creator in the book of Genesis, I'm talking about the principle of the story in the book of Genesis. I said, I'm talking about the principle. I'm talking about the principle of a story in Genesis where it talks about the creator was looking for Adam and Eve in the cool of the day in the garden. And when he happened upon them, because he had not told them what naked looked like. They explained when he was looking for them, where are you? They explained that they were avoiding him because they were naked. And he asks, the creator asks a question. Who told you that? And the way the story is told to us principally the way the story is told to us principally is that an enemy, what's known as the devil, is the one that told them that. So in like manner, I am asking the question, the way you see the world, your ideologies, some of your conclusions, some of your long held beliefs, I'm going to say it again. Some of your long held beliefs, I'm going to say it again. Some of your long held beliefs, things that you believed a long, long time. I'm here to say to you, who told you that? If it's the same one that chopped off your grandfather's private parts and used them for Christian ritualistic purposes, or as a souvenir. If it's that same one that raped and impregnated your auntie and made her give suck to them. If it's that same enemy that worked our family to sun up, to sun down. If it's that same one that pretended to emancipate us only to re-enslave us. If it's that same one that's responsible for the drugs in our community and the destruction of the black family and the, the poisoning of black people, if it's the same one that steals your political power, if it's the same one that steals your labor and refuses to give you uh, 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 reparations for it, but will give it to everybody else and will pretend like everybody else's suffering is more important than your own, if it's that one, baby, I submit to you today, that's the devil that told you that. Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. Hit that notification bell. My name is Vicki Dillard. I'm so pleased that you're with us today. Let's talk about it. We know, because I've done plenty of shows about Gail King and Oprah Winfrey, and I will not cease to do them so long as I'm led and so long as there are principles for us to learn. Why, Vicki? Because we are at war. And when you're at war, you conduct yourself accordingly. You focus on the things that serve as a very real and present danger to you and your people. And some of the things that you all think are more important, they're really not. It's not that they're not important. I said some of the things that you too often think are more important, it's really not. What happened, Vicki? Well, I want you to hear it for yourself. I'm going to go to the interview. I'm going to go to the interview. Let me get ready to try to cue this right now. And as I do that, family, 
It's over a thousand plus of you in the chat. Welcome to the Vicky Show. I'm so pleased that you're with us today. I missed you all of most of all of last week. I did one show. Thank you for your patience while I was dealing back and forth with some important medical appointments. Got some other things that are coming up, but I'll be sure to keep you post it if my show times change but make sure that you're subscribed because i'm not the only fly nubian queen and i do not want you to miss some of the other amazing content that some of the other sisters are doing you all know i was having a fit last week because so much was going on in the world and i had a lot to say about it but i had to hold off <laughs> but uh anyway family thumbs up thumbs up and please hit that notification bell thank you so much okay let me try to cue this i think this is it here Shout out to you, Jay, for your gift. I stand for my people. Thank you, beloved. May your gifts be returned back to you a thousandfold for your very kind and generous gifts. All of you that are giving, please know that you're supporting Black media. Please know that what's bringing okra to her knees, what's bringing kale to her knees, somebody put hashtag, I stand against Gail King. Somebody please make sure that whenever you're tweeting, Make sure that whenever you're using Instagram, our hashtag that we want to continue to reinforce that I've been seeing other new black media members use is hashtag I stand against Kale King. See, Sister Vicky is a woman. I'm a woman. So you can't come here with that little weak, whack, feminine talking point that says this is an attack on a woman. How can you say that this is an attack on Gail King as I keep saying to you before that the first person to check Gail King for her disrespect of Kobe Bryant was who? Another black woman, Leslie, Lisa Leslie, during the interview. She shut her down. And shortly after it aired, I immediately, as soon as I could, at least within 24 hours or so, I believe, or so after that interview aired, I was one of the ones, along with other sisters that were standing on the front line calling Gail King's funny looking self out. We make no apologies for that. I don't even classify her as a woman in this sense. I'm not even focused on the gender. I'm focused on the function. Lord have mercy. I'm going to say that again. In times of war, we're not focused on the gender. Because see, when you focus on the gender, you're trying to get us distracted. See, we're focusing on the function. What do you mean, Vicky? We're focusing on the function. Gail was functioning as an enemy, as a traitor to her people. So the, her, 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 her gender doesn't even come into the equation. I need somebody black. So when we're in a situation of war, because we're dealing within the context of war, it's only people who are butter biscuits and people who are content and white supremacist systems and institutions. It's only people that are preoccupied with the approval of white people that will turn around and say, oh, it, when Snoop said that to her, it was a black man disrespecting the black woman. No, it was not. It was an enemy coming against the black collective. Gail was functioning as a traitor. Gail was functioning as an enemy. So her gender doesn't even come into the equation. And she was just not some any kind of enemy. She was a powerful enemy that has a large platform that has the ear and has access to the minds of millions and millions and millions of people. Shout out to you, Silent D Production. Silent D Production says, keep breaking grounds and octaves. Queen Vicky, thank you, beloved. Shout out to you, Steady, for your gift. I stand against Kale King. Yes, may your gifts be returned back to you a thousandfold. 1,100 plus of you in the chat. So pleased that you're tuned into the Vicky Show, where I'm typically here weekdays, 6.30 p.m., right here on FlyNewBeenQueenTV.com. Don't you miss it. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thumbs up, thumbs up for those of you that haven't. And I was telling somebody earlier today, I got my little Fly New Bean Queen, one of my shirts on from Fly New Bean Queen, our store that says Afro uh, Child. Do y'all see that? Afro Child. I love that. And then we have the Fly Nubian Queen logo right there on the side. It's so cute. Get yours at shopfnq.com. That's shopfnq.com. Shout out to you, Anthony, for your gift. To all of you that are giving, may your gifts be returned back to you with a thousandfold. Watch this. Remember, I was trying to cue it before. Okay, let me get the sound. So what you're listening to now, my goal is to get this up real quick, is Okra's one of her last tours, I think, uh, the last leg of uh, of some of her tour, I believe it was. He was here in Denver. No, I didn't attend. Lord have mercy. Y'all know I would have been hack, uh, heckling and all kind of stuff. <laughs> Somebody talk black to me. Okay. I would have took over that little thing. Because I don't play with enemies. And I don't let people, as a woman, 
I don't let people to commit a form of identity theft by acting like that you are a black woman. When in fact, you are an enemy to your people. And so when folks try to say, oh, you're attacking another black woman again. or No, 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 no. I'm going to keep reminding some of you of that because that's a talking point that are just a couple, three of you, just a couple, three. It ain't everybody, but it's a couple, three of you are. And I'm trying to contain that wrong mindset, just like they're trying to contain the coronavirus. <laughs> it don't matter to me. I'm trying to keep mammyism under in check because mammyism is contagious. Shout out to you, kids, you who says break grounds. Yes. Mammyism is contagious. And we're trying to nip all this in the bud for any of you future would be mammies. That means for you to be a black female and you allow yourself to be used as a tool for white supremacy. And, and while you're you being used as a tool for white supremacy, you're also openly hostile to your own people. Baby, we have no tolerance for that. See, we see clearly here. Because this is a place for intelligent black people. You don't just get to go around talking about you intelligent now. We don't accuse everybody of being intelligent. <laughs> Come on now. And we don't make those assumptions. See, I do that a lot. I be making assumptions that people are smart and intelligent and stuff. But that proved me wrong. I've been mean, having too many situations and circumstances. You got to prove otherwise. And being intelligent is not about, about the number of degrees that you get from Ivy League uh, uh, schools and stuff. With a whole bunch of college debt. I don't count that as nothing. Your, 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 your knowledge has to do something for me. <laughs> it's got to have hands and feet. Your knowledge has to work out something in the real world. Got to get some results with that knowledge. You ain't pushing forth your people, baby. Go sit down with all of that. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Here we go. This is Oprah and Kale. Just, just, just interviewed about it. Oprah interviewing her best friend, Kale, at her tour. While I'm doing this, family, don't forget to give the, the thumbs up, thumbs up and hit the notification bell. When I ask you to do that, family, that helps to uh, 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 with the algorithm and that helps to draw other folk into the podcast. That's why we ask you to do that. And that helps to increase the voice of black folk. As I was saying before, you're giving and you're supporting black media. You thumbs up, liking it and sharing. You saying to other people, when folks talk about our own network, when folks talking about uh, 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 Dr. Phil's show and all that, you know, Dr. Phil, you need to be asking, do you know about the Vicky show? Come on, somebody. You need to be asking them, do you know about FlyNubianQueenTV.com? That's what you need to be, that's, that's what you ought to know about. Somebody talk black to me. Here we go, listen to this interview. I have moved on. Is there a scab? Yeah, but I have moved on. I put on my game face. Watch this. Have you moved on? I, I have moved on. Is there a scab? Yeah, but I have moved on. I put on my game face and my big girl pants because I never lost sight of who I was, what I believe I am, and my intention. I've never lost sight of that. But it certainly was It was a learning curve and it was very painful. But yeah, I, I think sometimes you have to go through that to, that makes you question things in life. Did you all hear that? Did you all hear that black family? Did you all hear that part? Watch this. I'm scared that you might have missed it. Watch this. Let me see if I can. I want you to listen to this other part. I want you to listen to this other part. Let me see if I can cue that one real quick for you. 1,200 plus of you in the chat. Welcome to the Vicky Show. On the count of three, this is still queuing. On the count of three, for those of you that hadn't, hit the notification bell. One, two, three, thumbs up. And the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, family, listen to this second part of the interview. Here we go. Every circumstance, I think this is something for all of us to remember. Listen. It's not the people who are being mean. It's not the badness. It's not... The, the vitriol that's being put into the world, but it's the good people who remain silent yes. that becomes so hurtful. That's so good. The good people that you remain know what? silent. I, I think this, I think we can disagree politically, we can disagree socially if you want to, but I just think humanity should prevail always. And I think we, are, we still have to figure out a way to navigate that with each other, that we can disagree and you can be mad at me, even you can be mad at me, but you can't speak to me. I love the way that I was spoken to and I threatened. Love, I love that you said, Did that hear that? all, you never question who you were. No, I, I, I 
Listen closely to the last part because they're going to be talking over them. They're going to be talking over each other in just a moment. But I don't want to. I, want, I don't want you to miss what she said. Remember the first part of the interview that I wanted you to hear. Gail is talking about how it was very painful. She said there's a scab. She says she's moved forward, but she's talking about how painful it is. Then you just heard Okra say, talk about the silence of other people. I believe uh, Gail mentioned, hit on that too on another part of the interview. But listen very carefully. I don't want y'all to miss this. This is, those of you that might be wondering, well, why is Vicky talking about this again? Why is Gail still talking about it? Why is Okra talking about it? If they would close their mouth, that don't mean I still wouldn't talk about it. No. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. Because see, when you're an enemy and there are lessons that I can glean from what you're doing that's gonna help my people and that's gonna keep exposing you. Because see, every time the white media puts them out there, every time we keep hearing the voices of Okra and Gail, it's an opportunity to continue to legitimize people that we delegitimize. And we've got the power to do it. Don't you see me with this gavel? Some of you are probably wondering who does Vicky think she is with this TV show, the Vicky show, with a gavel on, like she's some official authority. Baby, I am. And my authority did not come from my oppressor. My authority didn't come from the people that are responsible for the illegitimate uh, 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 indictment that I came under, or the illegitimate trial that I went through, or the illegitimate sentencing that I endured, or the illegitimate appeals responses that I got. It's not them that determines it. I'm legitimate and I'm authority, a baby, because I'm born that way. I'm the original woman. My authority comes with my inherited isness, amness, and beingness. The word be, the word am, is, they're just really different defective forms of each other. You used to see uh, 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 your Congress folks with this in their hands, chairmen and chairwomen, judges. Our word matters because we said so. Somebody talk black to me. And so because I know I'm talking to conscious minds and I'm also talking to your subconscious mind, I've got this gavel because I want you to know that what I say is important. And when we hit the gavel, I being a reflection of you, you must also know that what you say is important. How you think when you're in your right mind matters. The stuff that presidential candidates are talking about is because they're listening to what we say. And that's why we will not fail to lift our voice. But at the same time, it's also some of the very reasons why they try to deplatform, delegitimize us. And that's the reason why they try to come against our voices to circumscribe, to prevent and frustrate and foil what we're doing and what we say. But see, when we unify and when we are supporting each other, Baby, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I didn't say the weapon wouldn't be formed. I said that it would not ultimately prosper. Some of you are not familiar with war. See, some of you, when you get a little bit of pushback, you punk out. I'm going to say that again. Some of you are not familiar with difficulty. Some of you don't know the different dimensions, the different levels of warfare. See, when they push you a little bit, when they threaten you a little bit, when they put a little bit of fear in you, you back up, you back off. But see, the danger with some of you Negroes, you scared to death cowards, is see, you don't just stay scared singularly. You open up your big fat mouth and tell other people what they ought not do. Lord have mercy. So you become very dangerous and you share and you spread your fear. You, you share and you spread your cowardice by opening up your mouth and telling your family, friends and loved ones, don't even dare press against or come against white supremacy. Don't you dare say nothing about that because you know what happened to so-and-so, so-and-so. You know what went down on this kind of, come on, somebody talk black to me. Thus making you a collaborator in your own oppression. Some of you have not, you don't know, you're not familiar with the different dimensions of hell. But let me tell you something. I don't pretend to know it all. Some of you have more stories than anybody else, but let me tell you something about me. After dealing with high level authorities, feds, judges, state level, local level, Wall Street entities and agents, let me tell you something. I don't stop because my open enemy tells me to. 
I don't stop because even some well-meaning loved ones or family members tell me to. I know I got a job to do. And I know I was born to do exactly what I'm doing. And there is no energy, there is no force, and there is no power that makes me feel intimidated because there's a God in me. There's a creator in me. And who are you, governments? Who are you, agencies and institutions? For me not to challenge your powers. Who are you that I shouldn't resist? Who are you that I should comply and obey? And if enough of you do that, you serve as a force multiplier. See, power can increase. You can grow in power, but you better keep the scared to death away. You better keep the butter biscuits away. You better keep the ones that's only interested in getting jobs at the White House and those that are just concerned about getting another gig on MSNBC to be some political pundit. You got to keep them away from you. Somebody black talk black to me. 1,400 plus of you in the chat. Thank you for joining the Vicky Show. I'm so pleased to be back. Hit that notification bell, would you? And hit that thumbs up, thumbs up button. Please make sure that you like, that you share, and that you subscribe. On the count of three, for those of you that haven't, please hit that notification bell. That way we can draw other folk into this most important broadcast. On the count of three, one, two, three, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Some of you are used to punking out at the first stage. And then you spread your fear coronas type virus around to everybody else by opening up your mouth. See, viruses and so forth, they tend to spread. What do they tell you all to do to wash your hands, don't they? They tell you to do what? Cover your mouth. And they tell you at that, use the inside of your elbow when you're sneezing. They tell you to basically stay away from confined places, right? Because these are how stuff like that is caught. When you're within proximity of a disease, of a virus. Keep your distance from people that don't keep their eye on the ball, from people that are not concerned about the liberation of their people. Somebody talk black to me. Don't let them spread that. Somebody talk black to me. You got to do you got to be aggressive, just like people wash their hands. Stay away from certain places. Are y'all hearing me today? You got to be very intentional about making sure that kind of thinking doesn't spread. That's the reason why Gail King and Okra Winfrey are elevated to high places so that their way of thinking will spread. Shout out to you, Noah, for your gift. May your gift be returned back to you a thousandfold. Did you hear what I just said? These two black faced women who tend to be automatically trusted, they elevate those types of women so that that mindset that they have will spread. But baby, we can wash our hands of you just like we can, y'all better talk black to me. We can wash our hands of you. We can isolate ourselves from you. And what's so funny, I'm someone that's always concerned about medical stuff anyway, because I deal with an autoimmune disease concerning one of my major uh, organs. And so I'm always thinking and conscious about my surroundings when I'm able to go out and do different things like that. And so when you have a compromised immune system that tends to open you up to other illnesses, rashes, outbreaks, and too many other side effects from medicines and different things that I've had, because some of the one medicines I take messes with my immune system, it automatically lowers my immune system, immune system in order to try to help 
what they what the illness is. Watch this. And we'll wash our hands of you, okra and gail. See, your open enemy put them in position so that kind of thinking spreads. They don't, they're mad at us because we helped to shut that down. What's fascinating about this coronavirus is considering that there are seven plus, what, 7.2, 7.3 billion people on the planet. There are thousands in the big scheme of things that have died because of that coronavirus, regardless about whether or not your open enemy made the disease. Somebody talk black to me. Regardless about how it came to be and what their intentions were, regardless about whether or not you really believe that they actually started the disease in order to try to attack the Chinese because the Chinese was, was an economic competitor in America and the world's concerned about it. But it ended up having, as it usually does, unint unintended consequences. And we're seeing a lot of black folks open enemies being terrorized by this. But when you think about the few thousand people that have actually died and frankly been infected with the disease. And you compare that with the 7.2, 7.3 or so billion people that's on the planet, that's a small number, right? When you think about the billions of folk on the planet. But the reason why this is causing so much fear is because of the potential of what it could do. Lord have mercy. The potential of what it could do So folks are shutting down business meetings. Folk are, are not going on vacations and stuff. People are missing their church service and stuff. People are shifting the way they live their lives. Some folk are self-quarantining. Some folks might miss their rent because of the effects of this and the business and all this kind of stuff. Some Asian people in particular, Chinese folks more specifically, I was listening to some uh, a piece the other day about them not being able to make their rent and all this other kind of stuff because folks are not uh, patronizing their businesses and so forth. Let me tell you something. You know about this because the media put it before your face. You know about that because they have been pushing this and pushing this. And yes, there is an element of fear to it. Yes, there is an element, I believe, of our open enemy being involved in this. But at the same time, there are some lessons to learn. Understand the power of your own potential, just like this coronavirus. Just like the potential of what the coronavirus will do. People are concerned about that. You ought to see the power of us being able to spread our message and our power. Are y'all hearing me today? Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. Hit that notification bell, would you? Listen to this part of the interview that Gail and Okra just did again. I don't want you to miss this part of the interview. Let me get the volume. Is this it? Okay. In every circumstance, I think this is something for all of us to remember. It's not the people who are being mean. It's not the badness. It's not the, the vitriol that's being put into the world but it's the good people who remain silent yes. that becomes so hurtful. That's so good. Did you hear what she said? Okra had the nerve to say, it's the good people that were silent. That means in the wake of what Gail King was dealing with, Gail and, Gail and Oprah feels like not enough people came to Gail's defense. And Oprah had the nerve to say that what hurts is not the vitriol that was spewed. It was the good people that stayed silent. Y'all know, Oprah has a hell of a nerve, don't she? Oprah Winfrey, who was silent for decades on black issues that really mattered. Oprah, who refused to bring in any black liberating pro-black anti-white supremacist conscious people on her show. Oprah, who was openly hostile to black people, she had the nerve to get mad and say that it was good people when Gail 
was getting her butt rightfully whipped. She felt like not enough folk came to her defense. Some of their best buds kept silent. Ain't that something? Oprah was considered to be the queen of talk. Oprah was considered to be the most powerful black woman even at a time on the planet. Was it because she was a politician family? No. Why was Oprah considered to be the most powerful black woman at one time on the planet? Because she had access to millions and millions of minds and she was a trusted black woman. I'm trying to get you to understand how power works. Power is not always with who you consider to be the powerful. Like politicians, they are powerful. We understand that, some of them. But power works in different ways. And when you discover your own, number one, it'll stop you from being jealous. Let me hit the gavel on that. Number two, it'll help you to stop competing with your own black brothers and sisters. And it would make you to be more collaborative and willing to work with others so that you can get more done because you understand that when you aggregate or you combine and unify your power, you are more effective and you get more done for everybody. Shout out to you, Nora, for your gift. 1,500 plus of you in the chat. We're so pleased that you're with us today. Please give us a thumbs up, thumbs up. Be sure to like, be sure to share. Also, don't forget to text the word Queens to 31996 so that you're able to receive phone notifications when we go live from time to time. Listen to this again. Listen to this again. They got a nerve. They got some nerve. All that's being put into the world, but it's the good people who remain silent. Listen. Every circumstance, I think this is something for all of us to remember. It's not the people who are being mean. It's not the badness. It's not the, the vitriol that's being put into the world, but it's the good people who remain silent yes. that becomes so hurtful. It's so good. The good people that you know remain what? silent. I think this, I think we can disagree politically. We can disagree socially if you want to. Listen, because they're getting ready to talk over each other and I don't want you guys to miss what Gail is going to say, but you got to listen closely because Oprah is going to talk over her a little bit. Listen to what Gail is getting ready to say. I just think humanity should prevail always. And I think we, are, we still have to figure out a way to navigate that with each other, that we can disagree and you can be mad at me, even you can be mad at me, but you can't speak to me. I love the, the way that I was spoken to and I threatened. Love did you hear what she said? You can't speak to me. This is Gail. You can't speak to me the way I was spoken to and threaten me. Girl, if you don't go sit your funny looking self down somewhere, I'm going to say it again. We do not accept, Gail, that you were legitimately threatened. We don't accept that. Why? Because we need to see screenshots. We need to see screenshots because see, Gail and Oprah are honorary white women. Did y'all hear what I just said? Oprah and Gail, Oprah and Gail are honorary white women. They have been blessed and shielded by Harvey Weinstein, David Geffen, and other Hollywood media white supremacists, suspected white supremacists, credibly alleged white supremacists. Let's, let's call it that. They got to where they got to because white folks see them as safe Negroes. They got to where they got to because they knew that they were non-threatening. They knew that they would do more good for white supremacy than they would ever do for black issues. Did you all hear what I said? So when you saw major white networks come out to protect them. When you saw Joe Scarborough and MSNBC to come out to protect them, when you saw Kareem, Kareem, uh, 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 Pierre, whatever her name is, black chick who blocked me on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, uh, when you see those kinds of folk come out, when you see Jada Pinkett Smith, when she tried to protect Gail, but we, we, we nipped that bull in the bud. We shut her down real quick. And mind you, Gail and Oprah, they can't get a break. 
Gail and Oprah can't get a break because if you go on their social media platforms, they are being drugged. And they are, you can tell they're also monitoring the comments that's coming in there. Because it's so overwhelmingly bad for Oprah and Gail. People are still calling them out. The black collective and the black conscious are waking up. We're not playing with y'all. We're giving you no room. We're taking a very hard line. And we're not letting you lie to us by saying that you're attacking a black woman. No, we're dealing with an enemy of black people and we don't deal with gender. That's a trick. And we see too good for that, baby. And we're not falling for it. Thumbs up, thumbs up. 1600 plus of you in the chat watching us live today. Please like, share and subscribe. Don't forget again to check out our store where I'm rocking our shirt that says Afro Child with our Fly Nubian Queen a logo on the side. Check us out at shopfnq.com. That's shopfnq.com. Don't forget to follow me also on Instagram at Vicky X Dillard. Follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Dillard. Watch this. Watch this. Oprah. Let me read you this quote. Let me read you this quote. How many of you all remember the numerous shows I've done on Oprah? Where I discuss the fact, watch this, because I'm going to get this quote right. Where I discuss the fact that growing up, even when Oprah was in uh, college, I told you guys that Oprah had no love for being around black folk, even though she went to a historically black college and university. She's on record as saying how she hated, 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 hated it. Her words, her exact words, not just mine. Okay? Watch this. I'm reading from the conversation.com an excerpt that's important for you to remember this little part. One of the things that this article says is that first, she says it helps to understand just how popular Oprah was leading up to the 20, 2008 election when she um, endorsed Barack Obama, right? One of the things that it says is from 2002 to 2006, Winfrey's daytime talk show pulled in an estimated 7 million viewers, 7 million viewers every day. Winfrey also had racial crossover appeal. Listen to that phrase. Winfrey also had racial crossover appeal, maintaining an audience that was predominantly white female. Let me say it the way it's written that was predominantly female, white, and over the age of 55. I'm gonna say that again. Don't forget white folks love a good mammy. They love a heavy set black woman. I've explained what that mammy archetype represents. It's not just about weight, it's, what it rep it, it, it's, it's way more to it than that. That was her main audience, which we knew. Again, it says during the phase of her career, during this phase of her career, Oprah avoided politics. This is what I want you to hear. A strategy that may have helped her quote unquote transcend race. To borrow a phrase from political scientists, Donald K Kinder and Kareem McNaughty. Listen, for example, in an interview with the Jacksonville Daily News in 1986, I want you to listen, Oprah described her high school experience. Remember, I told you a lot of stuff that she said when she was in college. I gave you a lot of receipts on that. And I'll give you another excerpt here in a minute for that. But this is one I want you to hear, too. Because I told you there are signs for mammyism. See, real good, effective mammies, they show early signs of mammyism. Somebody talk black to me. See, when they're young and stuff, you can see little signs. That's why you got to nip that stuff in the bud. Watch this. But it's also why white supremacists choose you to do their bidding. In Jacksonville, Daily News, 1986, Oprah described her high school experience. This is a quote. Everybody went through the black power phase, but I knew I was not a daishiki kind of girl. Shout out to you, Rashonda, for your gift. You're exactly right, Rashonda. Listen, did y'all hear what I said? This is a direct quote from Okra. 
And I'm trying to tell you that this train of thinking, the way she believed, the way she thought in the world is why she conducted her show the way that she did. So pro-white, so anti-black. And the only time she came to black people was when it was time to save her ratings or to save her network. That's it. That's all. I've done numerous shows giving you the receipts on that. From her interview that she had with Christina uh, Brown, uh, Christina Bobby. Whitney Houston's daughter, and it talked about how the ratings shot up and she chose to do that show at that time. I gave you the receipts quoting some of her folk that worked with Oprah and the own network when they said that it was not even their intention for her, uh, audience, uh, Oprah's audience to be predominantly black and black female. They happened upon it. They bumped up on it. Y'all know she brought in Tyler Perry. She brought in Ayanna Van Zandt after dogging Ayanna. Remember, it was toward the end of Oprah's 25-year career on the Oprah show that she finally brought Ayanna, Ayanna back on after she dissed Ayanna for all those years and she refused to even reconcile with Ayanna in private. I gave you all the receipts on that. I'm not, you, I'm not just talking out the side of my neck. Not to mention how she did uh, Tony Braxton and tried to humiliate her when she was going through a bankruptcy. How she disrespected Monique. Remember, I did whole shows, a whole entire podcast on that. Shout out to you, Loretta. This is not about picking on Oprah. Don't come up in here acting like you some hero and you some pro-black woman. You, if you really are, then you should have a problem with the work and the damage and the devastation that Oprah has been doing over the years. But because some of you all are so pleased with how bright her celebrity star is because white folks made it like that. You let them get away with literal murder. Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. 1,700 plus of you in the chat. Welcome to the Vicky Show. Thank you for like, sharing, and subscribing. We're so pleased that you are with us today. Listen. 1986, she says to Jacksonville Daily, everybody went through the black power phase. But I knew I was not a dashiki kind of girl. Talking to... People Weekly, a year later, Oprah said that during college, remember I told you I'm going to give you a college quote again. During college at Tennessee State, a historically black college, which you knew, she, quote, refused, this is a quote from her, refused to conform to the militant thinking of the time. So while black folks was being lynched, run out of town, denied education, disenfranchised, and all kinds of other things, Things. Oprah saw black folks as being the problem. She saw their militancy. She saw their anger as a thing to mock and a thing to get away from it. Notice she said she wasn't a dashiki kind of girl. Y'all better hear me today. I'm reading you a quote now. People feel you have to lead a civil rights movement every day of your life that you have to be a spokeswoman and, and represent the race. Listen, Oprah said, blackness is something I just am. Writing in 1994, media scholar Janice Peck, Peck asserted that Winfrey served as a, a comforting, non-threatening bridge between black and white culture. And that's the reason why she was made a billionaire and that is the reason why she is a problem for black people. When you're dealing with war and when you're dealing with the oppression of black people family, you cannot get a, a pat on the back from us because of your ability to do what Janice Peck said, Oprah serving as a comforting, non-threatening bridge between black and white culture. When you're at war, and when there's a changing of the guards, there's going to be some tension because those that are the powers that shouldn't be, that maintains the status quo, they're not excited about the fact that they're losing power and that they're dying off biologically without us ever even having to fire a shot. Somebody talk black to me. Get Dr. Francis Chris Welsing's book, The ISIS Papers, The Keys to the Colors. When you're trying not to disturb those that kill us, you are a problem for us. When you're trying to make sure that you don't tick off massa, you are a problem for us. 
When you keep telling people to bow, to bow down, when you keep telling us just to vote like this and to pick the difference between good white people and the other ones, when you keep on telling us, don't ask for no reparations. We know it's been 465 years that you all been in oppression. But now is not the time for that. When you keep hearing Negroes say stuff like that, you know that they are a problem for black society. We've been waiting 465 years, which they acknowledge but they keep telling black folks to keep waiting or they keep saying stuff like, but we've made progress. Something is wrong with you. If you can't get a car to work after 465 years, if you can't build a house after 465 years, I don't want no parts of it. They want you to pat America on the back for the quote unquote progress she claims she's made. as if that's okay after 465 years. We are a generation that is not okay with a slice of the pie. We want the whole pie. We are a generation that is not content with the crumbs from the master's table. And they're mad that we're not content with some little raggedy crumbs. I need somebody black to talk black to me. Listen to this quote again. Oprah served as a comforting, non-threatening bridge between black and white culture. She goes on to say that Winfrey minimized her race, listen, Vicky, why are you reading this right now? Because I'm going to tell you something about Oprah's funny looking self when she had the hypocritical nerve to say about good people staying quiet when it came down to protecting Gail. These honorary white women stayed silent about things that were related to black issues. There is nothing more important than speaking on behalf of black people. I'm going to say that again. There is nothing, nothing more important than the issue of making right and making repair to black people. Because everything that's wrong in the whole wide world, whether it's climate change, whether it's the coronavirus, whether it's a, 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 a a tenuous economic situation. Everything in the whole wide world that's wrong is directly or indirectly connected to the mistreatment of black people. And we see that example even in scripture when it talks about the children of Israel. The Bible speaks and algorithms. Did y'all hear what I said? The Bible speaks in algorithms. It speaks in code. You got to have the right person to crack the code. So when the scriptures are talking about the children of Israel, the children of Israel, that meaning the people that are in bondage, is dealing with you black men and black women because there's no people on the planet that fits the description of having been oppressed in one form or another for over 400 years. We're the only people that fits that description. And the chosen people that the Bible discusses is not some folk that's in that place that they call Israel. It's you and I here in America. And it's the reason why the scriptures go from the New Testament the Old Testament, rather, talking about Babylon and the stories of Babylon to the book of Revelation, talking about a mystery Babylon. Lord have mercy. You got to understand this ain't just about Christendom, Christianity, and just mere spirituality. It speaks in algorithms so that you will know who you are and what to expect. 
The reason why the book of Revelation in one part describes Babylon as a mystery Babylon is telling you, it's hinting to you even in the book of Revelation, which is why it's called Revelation. The de dealing with the uh, even uh, the apocalypse, the unveiling. Because it's not Babylon in the literal city that you're thinking about. It's mystery Babylon, which is America. When you connect the dots with the nations that broke off of a lot of these ancient nations and ge well-known geographical locations, you will find out that America is in direct line of those individuals. That mystery Babylon is America. That Pharaoh is not that dude with that Charleston Hairston type movie that's pretending to be a black Egyptian in the first place. The Pharaoh are your wicked rulers that rule over you now here in America. Somebody black talk black to me. You are the chosen people of God. When they mess with the children of Israel in the Bible, what happened? When Pharaoh refused to let them go, what happened? God messed with the economy, didn't he? Lord have mercy. When they refused to let God's people go, when they refused to stop the mistreatment, when they refused not to give reparations because the Bible talks about when they left, they just weren't free. They left, they spoiled the entire nation. Shout out to you, daughter of Oshun, says America is in her wilderness season. Absolutely, beloved. He messed with the cattle. He messed with the, with creation. They were dealing with climate change. They ended up dealing with actual death in their own homes. That's the reason why when you hear me say everything that's wrong in the whole wide world is directly or indirectly connected to the mistreatment of God's people. And we are that chosen people. The scriptures speak in symbols, in riddles, and in algorithms. And some of you are hesitant to take my interpretation of that because you're used to TBN and Daystar mostly white men that you find deal with stories of the end times and the apocalypse and the revelation. You gonna take their word over your black brothers and sisters interpretation. You're gonna take the word of your open enemy over what we're telling you what it really means. Somebody black talk black to me. Let me tell you something. 1,800 plus of you in the chat. Welcome to the Vicky Show. Set your clocks to know that I'm typically here Monday through Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Fly Newbie and Queen TV.com. I'm so pleased that you're with us today. For those of you that sent me prayers and kind words for missing so many days last week, thank you so much. My medical situation is moving forward. I'll keep you posted on any future days where I'm going to have to miss. Shout out to you, Erin, who says we are so blessed to have our warrior queen back on post. So thank you for your kind words and may your gifts be returned back to you a thousandfold. Make sure that you text the word queens to 31996 so that you're able to re receive phone notifications when we go live from time to time. Vicky, why were you reading about okra staying silent about racial issues? Vicky, why did you play the part from Oprah and Gail's interview to talking about how that's how Oprah came up? By avoiding black issues and by appeasing white folks. That's why she was so highly rewarded. That's why she and Gail are trusted to be elevated. Y'all ain't hearing me. <laughs> See, ma uh, mammies and coons have to be trusted. Remember, I gave you all the details, the historical descriptions and insight on mammies. Mammies were actually black, heavy set, black women in particular, were considered to be family of the white supremacists, of their slave master, or, or they, of their owner, or of their white racist boss. Shout out to you, Michelle, for your gift who says she's back. Yes, beloved. Listen, they had to be trusted. And so the reason why 
the archetype that represents the mammy was often heavy set and thick was because that was a sign of how well taken care of she was. She ate better than everybody else. She was treated better, but she was trusted. She had a track record of standing for the white supremacists. Oprah has shown decade after decade after decade her refusal and her hostility to black folk. Shout out to you, black mama, for your gift. Blessings of good health, long life, peace. Thank you, queen. May your gift be returned back to you a thousandfold. Black mama has been a blessing to this network and to me personally. So I want to thank you so much, queen, for your support of the new black media. May your gift be returned back to you a thousandfold and every one of you that are doing the same. Take a quick moment, family, to give us a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. One, two, three. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. And if you're watching us on another one of our platforms, please make sure that you like, that you share, and that you comment there as well. Thank you so much. Listen, they have a long track record of not upsetting the white supremacist apple cart. They showed early signs in high school and in college and long thereafter of being faithful to the oppressor and being rewarded because of it. I also point out these things, family, on how Oprah and Gail think and how they thought growing up when they were in there as young women, as young adults. Shout out to you, Awakening Sister. It says, yes, sister, we are the Israelites in the Bible, the spy, but yes, we are, beloved. Thank you for your generous gift. May your gift be returned back to you, beloved, a thousandfold. Listen, the reason I keep highlighting their thinking is because I'm trying to get you to see where... I want you to locate if there's some okra in you. <laughs> Somebody told that to me. I want you to locate in yourself if there's some kale in you. And I'm trying to expose to you ve how very problematic that is. And how your open enemy uses those mindsets to ensure that your people never moves forward. Why, Vicky, did you read to us specifically? Watch this. I don't want you to forget this quote. Media scholar. Vicky, why did you quote this media scholar, Janice Peck? Who did I say? Media scholar. Who said, Oprah Winfrey served as a comforting non-threatening bridge between black and white culture. She says that Winfrey minimized her race. Did y'all hear what I said? Winfrey minimized her race. In other words, she did not talk about it. Oprah did not stand for things that she could have stood for on our behalf. Listen. She minimized her race through public rejection of black political activism and civil rights movement. Y'all, this is not just me talking. Y'all know I don't play about giving you receipts and truth and other insight. I know some of y'all laugh because you're thinking, who is this woman with this hair and this big old, these big old cheeks and this jewelry and these nails and that gavel? But this media scholar Janice Peck said this again. I don't want you to miss this. And then I'm going to play you again what Okra's arrogant self said a few minutes ago again, because I want you to connect the dots. See, we believe in connecting to the dots here, right? Shout out to you, Peace Within, for your gift. So glad to see you, Vicky. Outstanding show as usual. Thank you, beloved. I'm so glad to see you. It's my honor and my bliss to be with you. Mwah. Listen, what did she say again? This media scholar, Janice Peck, said, Winfrey served as a comforting, non-threatening bridge between black and white culture. She goes on to say that Winfrey minimized her race 
through public rejection of black political activism and the civil rights movement. That's a quote. I'm gonna say it again. Winfrey minimized her race, which we didn't need no scholar to tell us this, but when we got a scholar that makes some sense, I'll quote that scholar. It's gonna talk back to me. Winfrey minimized her race through, how did she do it? This is a quote from this scholar. Through public rejection of black political activism. and the civil rights movement. Keep that tidbit in mind. Can you hold that in your mind right now, family? Can you hold that in your mind right now? While you hold that in your mind, while you hold that thought in your mind, watch this. Let me see if I can do this right. While you hold that thought in your mind, let's see if I can cue this right. Why you hold that thought in your mind? Is this it? Watch this. While I'm getting this together, let me let me try to recue this. But I'm trying to pull this up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, 1,900 plus of you in the chat. Welcome to the Vicky Show. We're so pleased that you're with us today. Please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure that every single one of you are, is, is subscribed to our um, network. Please hit that subscribe button. Would you do that? You all helped us hit 100,000, over 100,000 subscribers now the other day. And we're so glad about it. You are what's making us powerful. I'm also a contributor on yourblackworldtv.com. So make sure you subscribe there as well. We've got more content coming from you, coming for you, uh, coming for you. And we're so pleased that you're with us today. Watch this. Give me a minute. Y'all know I'm live. I'm doing it. I'm doing one woman show right now. Give me a second to pull this up. I'm trying to do this all at the same time. Again, don't forget to make sure you're subscribed to flynewbeenqueen.com. We have our own actual website as well. And text the word Queens to 31996. It's a quick commercial while I cue this. And make sure that you check out our store at shopfnq.com. That's shopfnq.com. I got my cute little shirt on today, which I love that says Afro Child. And Lord knows I am. And then just got the little logo, I Fly Newbie Queen logo one. You can get you mugs and all kinds of other amazing apparel there. So again, shopfnq.com. The link will be in the thing. Okay, here we go. But it's the good people who remain silent. Yeah. And in time. every circumstance. Listen to this hypocrite. Remember, you're, you're remembering the fact of what this scholar said, which we knew. We watch Oprah over the years. Ignore us and not be a voice for us. But we see this confirmed, even with those that have the privilege of academia. Now, keep that in mind. When Oprah kept her big fat mouth shut, she's known for her mouth. She's known for her being a talk show host. She's known as being a storyteller. And instead of using her voice and her mouth and her influence for the most important subject and people and issue on the planet, and that's anything related to black people, that's of substance dealing with freedom, justice, and equality for us, she chose to say silent. And Oprah became fat because of it. Fat how? Well, fat physically? Yes, I think that's a sign. But her bank accounts became fat because of her allegiance to white supremacy. Listen. I think this is something for all of us to remember. Listen. It's not the people who are being mean. It's not the badness. It's not the, the vitriol that's being put into the world. But it's the good people who remain silent yes. that becomes. It's the good people. The fact that she can't see how ironic and hypocritical she's being there is amazing. But it's not that she can't see that she's being a hypocrite. It's that Oprah and Gail are honorary white women. It's that Oprah and Gail are used to being media royalty where they have been able to get away with disrespecting black folks for so long. And now all of a sudden they're actually having to experience consequences for their betrayal. 
This is the language we must use when we describe them. Treason and betrayal. I have to use strong, true words to describe these women because if I don't, your subconscious mind will keep seeing them as a sister and someone that you automatically think that you need to protect. But you only think you need to protect them because white folks told you to and because white folks celebrate them. I'm going to keep pointing this out because I want you to think about other members of the new black media, of the old dead black media, like Roland Martin. No disrespect, but Dr. Mark Lamont Hill. No disrespect, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. The Joy Reads of the world. Y'all know who they are. You can put some of their names in the comment section. I'm not trying to disrespect those individuals. I'm not trying to marginalize them. I'm saying they, de they delegitimize themselves because they're trying, they enjoy those back door meetings. They enjoy being on MSNBC and CNN. They enjoy getting honorariums for speaking at certain places and they sell out your freedom To do just what Oprah did. And that's to betray their own people. These individuals. Michael Eric Dyson just came out and supported Joe Biden. We know all of these candidates are white supremacists and they have problems with black folk. We're not about, we're not caught up black folks. We're in, we're, we're an intelligent electorate now. So that means we know that you guys are really all devils and we know who we're working with, but we understand that because we are not committed to you based on friendship or chicken, you come into a chicken fry. Or you showing up at our church and putting a robe on. The only thing that doesn't make it, this, this thing, the only thing that you can do, this doesn't make you righteous. But it lets us know. That who we need to deal with in terms of our interest. What's the saying? Folks, don't, we don't have permanent friends. We just have we just deal with people. With, we have permanent interests. Somebody else put Chuck D. Wow. And I was disgusted and sad to see that Chuck D. Was what threatening to fire, uh, was it Flavor Flav or whatever, from their group of 30 some odd years or so over his support of Bernie Sanders. That's crazy because, because Flavor Flav wasn't about supporting uh, Bernie. Because we know that you guys are all devils. The only thing that we're trying to hear is whether or not Joe Biden, what 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 things are you putting out there to rectify the damage that you did with the 1994 crime bill? What are you putting out there to rectify what you did in the 80s to black people? And what are you putting out there to cause America to rectify the theft she's enjoyed for all of these years for our free labor? That's what we're about. Are y'all hearing us? And that's the reason why I'm going to keep saying this on almost every show if I can remember to do it. Because we're in a political season, so I'm going to really be driving home these points. We are not going to vote for whoever the Democratic nominee is. Let's be clear. Shout out to you, you know it, for your gift. We are not going to just throw in the towel and just support whoever the Democratic nominee is. We will not vote at all. And they cannot scare us with talking about all these judges that they're concerned that Trump is putting on the bench. They cannot scare us 
that our life is going to be so much worse than what it already is now when it's the very same judges that helped to give me an unjust sentence and conduct a godless trial. It was an unjust system that entertained an unjust indictment in the first place. It's an unjust system that's in place now that helped to kill our black brother. And every time you talk to one of these black butter biscuits who try to scare you and tell you, but they're putting all of these different judges. Let me tell you something. If the Democrats were serious about giving black folks, giving us what we're due. Yes. Somebody put hashtag cut the check. That's right. Mia hashtag cut the check. What do black folks want? Why y'all complicating it? We need a, 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 to people to study. We don't need nothing but cut the check. Simple. Cut the check. All these programs that Bernie's little socialist self is proposing is about cutting multiple trillion dollar, multi-trillion dollar check. That's what that is. That's what it's all black to me. When America goes to war, she cuts a multi-trillion dollar check or she gets herself in, 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 in trillions of dollars in debt and don't pay it off to later on and screw over old folks too. With that plan D thing that they did under Bush. Bush didn't pay for none of that stuff. That's the reason why the economy had already tanked before he left office and Obama inherited that big mess. When the banks got the bailout, the bailout was just not the formal multi-billion dollar bailout agreement, TARP agreement. They got trillions of dollars when you study it by skipping Congress and going straight to the feds. Do your homework on that. Listen, that's what we're dealing with. We're not voting for whoever the Democratic nominee is. And nobody can scare us. If the Democrats do what they're supposed to do, put forward a true black, robust economic agenda. That's just for starters. Cut the check. Put a real policy plan in place to make it happen for real. When you generate for real, for real, for real black turnout, that's automatically going to have a domino effect. And of course, we drive, we the, we're the kingmakers. Watch this. If they're really concerned about all of these judges, which I, I don't like, all of these right wing Republican judges that Trump is putting on the bench. If the Democrats get into uh, uh, get the White House and they turn around, get a few more Senate seats so they're able to have uh, the majority there. That means that you'll have both a Democratic House. A Democratic Senate and then the presidency would be Democratic. You can actually put statues in place for some of these judges. I know this might be a novel idea, but because they're not necessarily specific rules, even with the Supreme Court, they could actually legitimately nominate a whole other new Supreme Court justice or two to balance the Supreme Court as well. They can institute new statues that could put more robust judicial guidelines in place to either swing the Democratic or the more left-leaning judges in place. But there's plenty they could do if they would but have the courage to do it. And if they would make that a part of their platform. Just like Elizabeth Warren, when she was talking about that um, if she were to win and all this kind of stuff, she would get rid of the filibuster. That way, by just having a simple majority, the Democrats will be able to push through their agenda. Somebody talk black to me. Remember, Obama got Obamacare through. The ACA, as it's formally called, through because for that short, short period of time, Obama had a majority. And they used what they call the nuclear option in Congress. 
There are creative ways to get stuff done. But black folks, we've been catching hell under both Democratic and Republican administrations. And every time we tell one of these black bootlicks who, who pretend that there are some kind of uh, political strategist and mastermind, when we tell them this, they still try to tell you vote or die. They still try to tell you your ancestors died for you to vote. Somebody talk black to me. Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. Hit that notification bell. Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. Hit that notification bell. Let me get back to okra and kale. Eat your vegetables, okra and kale. Listen again to this last part. I'm cueing it now. In every circumstance, I think this is something for all of us to remember. It's not the people who are being mean. It's not the badness. It's not the, the vitriol that's being put into the world, but it's the good people who remain silent yes. that becomes so hurtful. That's so good. The good people that you know remain what? silent. I think this, I think we can disagree politically. We can disagree socially if you want to, but I just think humanity should prevail always. Listen. And I think we, are, we still have to figure out a way to navigate that with each other, that we can disagree and you can be mad at me. Even you can be mad at me. But you can't speak to me. I love the, the way that I was spoken to. And I, love, I love that you said that. Did you hear her lying, funny looking self? Gail is lying. Please, can we get a Pinocchio in, this, in the building? Gail is lying. Gail is sitting there saying that you cannot speak to me the way that you spoke to me and threaten me. I'm scared that you guys didn't hear it because remember I told you at the end, Oprah was talking over her and I wanted to keep playing it because I don't want you guys to think that I'm putting words in her mouth. I wanted you to hear it clearly so that way, that way when you retell the story, you will know based on what you heard very, very clearly. For all of us to remember, Listen. it's not the people who are being mean. It's not the badness. It's not the, the vitriol that's being put into the world but it's the good people who remain silent. And we've already, we have already showed how Oprah's being hypocritical on that, right? Shut up, Oprah. Hush your mouth. Now listen closer to Gail. That uh, becomes so hurtful. That's so good. The good people that you remain know what? silent. I, I think this, I think we can disagree politically. We can disagree socially if you want to, but I just think humanity should prevail always. And I think we, are, we still have to figure out a way to navigate that with each other that we can disagree and you can be mad at me, even you can be mad at me, but you can't speak to me. I love the, the way that I was spoken to. And, I, lo and? I love that you can't speak to me. I love the, the way that I was spoken to. And I, love, I love that you said One more that time. We each other, that we can disagree and you can be mad at me, even you can be mad at me, but you can't speak to me. I love the, the way that I was spoken to. And I, love, I love that you said. Stop lying. Snoop came out, made it very clear. I think, in fact, that was one of his, his first apologies when he said, first of all, he said he was raised better than that. What He says, what do I look like threatening a 60-year-old woman? He was not threatening you. And in the event folk came to that conclusion, he clarified that's exactly not what he was saying. That's what, number one, that's what Snoop said. Meaning physically threatening you. And then Gail, Kale, you turning around saying you he, people can't speak to you that way. First of all, Snoop's little funny little weed smoking self apologized to you also for speaking to you like that. So why are you still running around acting like you're the victim? I told you before, I don't legitimately believe that there were real death threats against you, Gail, because we need to see screenshots. You should have engaged in a press conference where law enforcement was there and law enforcement is saying they're on it to shut this down because someone of Gail's statue is getting legitimate threats. We don't play that. We're going to have to take them or we're going to have to take this seriously. So number one, go sit down. And number one, notice that Gail is conflating little fake troll threats that she got on social media, probably, if she got any at all, with something that Snoop said and can't threaten me when the man clarified that he did not threaten you. Did you all hear me? Somebody said that Snoop actually said 70 year old, well, either, uh, 70 year old. Did he say 60 some year old or 60 year old, 70 year old woman? Yes, he might have. Actually, I think he did say 70 year old woman. The point is, he was saying that he was not trying to physically threaten you. 
Stop lying. He's formally apologized to you. You even asked to have a meeting with you and you're still running out here again like an honorary white woman trying to act like you're the victim and we're not going to let you get away with it. You're not going to flip the narrative, Gail. This is still all your fault. More importantly, I did a whole podcast on Susan Rice giving a real threat. So if you believe that Snoop actually threatened you, I want to know what do you think Susan Rice did when she told Snoop to back the F off and that she's got a whole army and that they will not lose. In fact, none of your criticism deserves to even be heard, Gail. We've delegitimized you. And Gail said in the first part of that interview that I played for you, that wasn't the exact first part of the actual interview interview, but the first clip that I played for you, Gail said what? She said it was painful. Why was it painful? Because of the work that we've been doing as the black grassroots. We've been holding her and Oprah accountable for misusing black people and black men specifically. We have been calling them out for using the death of black men so that they can come up. I have moved on. Is there a scab? Yeah, but I have moved on. Listen. I put on my game face. Have you moved on? I, I have moved on. Is there a scab? Yeah, but I have moved on. I put on my game face and my big girl pants, because I never lost sight of who I was, what I believe I am, and my intention. I've never lost sight of that. But it certainly was, it was a learning curve and it was very, very painful. But yeah. I it was painful because we made it painful. Rebuke is, doesn't feel good, Gail. Remember when Oprah came out, when Gail missed work uh, on that, that, was it that Thursday, that Friday? Uh, when she missed, was it a Friday? Yeah, when she missed on a Friday, and uh, Gail went on the opposite network. She went on NB uh, uh, NBC to try to cape for Gail, talking about she's not doing well. Baby, when you get in trouble, you're not going to do well. <laughs> so talk back to me. Gail is not doing well due to fault of her own. So talk back to me. Did y'all hear me? When you get rebuked for using the death of a black man to come up on, you, you're not supposed to feel good. You're not going to do well. Gail is not doing well. Let me tell you something. When you get your tail spanked, it's not going to feel good. She's painful. I wanted to point that out to you, family, to tell you you're the reason it was painful. They're feeling your power. They're hearing our voice. And we won't stop. Because they failed to use their voice for us. They found themselves being used, to being weaponized against black uh, black people. And we're not going to put up with it. But let me tell you one more thing before I get out of here. There's so much more I can say, but I'm not going to. Thumbs up, thumbs up, by the way, family. Hit that notification bell, would you? Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Diller. Follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Diller. Let me say this. Gail and Oprah especially Oprah, dealt mostly with inter in the entertainment segment of the media. And may I tell you that that's the most, that's one of the most dangerous and most powerful areas of media to be in? Yes, entertainment. Gail claims that she's, you know, she's like, she's a, a anchor woman for news and stuff like that. But, you know, they get off into foolishness all the time on CBS this morning. Why am I bringing up that aspect of the entertainment industry? Because the entertainment, the nature of entertainment pulls you into it in a way where you think that you're watching something basically for entertainment or just for, you know, to be joyful and happy and this kind of stuff. Something that's not serious. When that's the most dangerous way Listen to the word I'm going to use to administer an anti-black agenda. The entertainment industry is a very effective way to program you and to condition you because you participate in it in a way that you wouldn't watching the regular news. Enjoy.
hear what I said? Did you all catch that? But let me tell you another reason that the Gail Kings and the Oprahs are tripping with us. Let me tell you another reason why Gail's network, CBS, came back and tried to say they support Gail and all this other kind of stuff and she shouldn't have got threatened and all this mess. Let me tell you why they responded in the way that they did, which again is an ode to your power, black man and black woman. It's proving that the black grassroots, it's proving that black society is effectively speaking for themselves and controlling the narrative. Somebody say we control the narrative. Listen, and this is a point that I think too many people miss. And I've been thinking about this for a long, long time now. And I think this is important. The reason why Okra was crying, pretending like she was crying the other day because of Gail. You just heard them admit, you heard Oprah say it out of her own mouth, that they were expecting other people who they call good people to speak out for Gail that didn't. Ooh, did y'all hear that? I replayed that over and over when Oprah said, the silence of the good people, they're used to dominating. Oprah thought she was sovereign. So much so that some of the folk that were once under the okra spell, Oprah is mad about. Oprah is disappointed about and said that even some of the good people didn't speak out. That means that we are being effective in our messaging and in our power. But that ain't it. Another reason why you saw certain networks issue statements, the reason why you saw Susan Rice, who worked for the Obama administration and Clinton administration, come out and cuss out and threaten Snoop. The reason why you saw all of these other different folks, we thought there was quite a few people that tried to come to her defense. But according to Okra, there were others that kept silent. So they're feeling weakened now because they've lost power. Somebody said hammer time. This is for you. This is for you, CG. Listen. Oprah and Gail are used to mainstream news, mainstream media, mainstream entertainment as the module. But this social media thing is taking them by storm. They're losing power. They don't know how to get it back. But don't miss this part. Gail and Oprah who in the past did what? They are used to making little slick comments about black men. They're used to throwing the black community under the bus. And as I've given you receipts before, even hearing from another media scholar say how Oprah came up by rejecting her blackness, ignoring black issues, the black act uh, uh, activist element in the civil rights uh, movement. The reason why their network was tripping, the reason Gail is tripping, the reason Okra is tripping is because they've done this plenty of times before. And it's not working. And they knew that they had planned in the future. They know an opportunity will very likely come up to where they're going to need to go off on a black man. And they know it's going to be hard to do it. They're concerned that it's going to mess with their future bag. This is another reason they're pissed. Gail was rewarded when she dogged out R. Kelly. Nobody questioned Gail seriously about her connections to the David Geffens of the world. Nobody questioned Gail seriously about her connections to Harvey Weinstein. Nobody seriously questioned Gail about her connections and her protection with Charlie Rose. They know they're afraid that they've got to be careful in the future and how they shape the narrative when it comes down to black people. And they know that what drives ratings high 
Gail knows that what got her that $11 million contract, their network understands, CBS understands that what drives their ratings is when they're able to easily throw a black man under the bus, they know that that's in danger now. This isn't just about what happened with that one individual incident. It's about the fact that they heard from us left and right saying that you guys have a habit. You guys have a pattern of doing this and we're tired of it. Number one, Gail was not seriously threatened because law enforcement should be involved if that's the case. And she should have did a press conference. And more importantly, we need screenshots. She's pretending still that she's the victim by going around saying that you can't threaten me when the man made it clear that you weren't being threatened. She's pretending like she's so concerned about him using the B word while she brags like the Obamas brag, while she brags about her girl Lizzo, whose hit song has to do with being a bad B. We can't take y'all seriously. Somebody black talk black to me. Let me get out of here. It's so much more I can say, family. Y'all can tell I'm back. Thank you for your patience. Join me tomorrow, same time, same place. Um, actually, the time might be different tomorrow, but stay tuned for tomorrow's show, The Vicky Show, right here on FindingQueenTV.com. Be sure to check out check out our store so you can get your Afro Child shirt at shopfnq.com. Get your mug. Get all kinds of other apparel there as well. Follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Dillard. That's follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Dillard. Don't forget to text the word Queens to 31996. Text Queens to 31996 so that you're able to receive phone notifications when we send them out from time to time. Love you so much. Be sure to share this. Um, hit that button at the end of your screen, if you can see me now uh, on your, uh, depending on what device you have, and make sure that you copy the link and that you share it on your social media platforms. It's time for us to continue to fortify, to strengthen, to support the voices of Black folks who actually speak for us, the grassroots. You matter. And this stuff that's happening with Oprah, these confessions with her and Gail, prove to us day by day that we're having an effect. I 